If the answer isn't yes, you gotta make some changes. Anyway, uh, we need to take a break from trying to save the world or the RC world and get back to business. So this is a quick video on three commonly overlooked ways that you can improve your racing. So let's go. Okay, so just like my previous video, which you can see here, uh, which was top five ways to be faster for zero dollars, these three things are also free. Brilliant. So let's go. The first one is a bit of a thing that you can't always do this. You need the right circumstances. So if we go and look at this picture here, this was from a few weeks ago when I was in uh, Spain, in Madrid, for testing. And one afternoon it rained, and then the next day I went to the track, and I cleared some puddles, and then early afternoon this is what the track looked like. So it was dry enough to drive. Now, what's special about a track after rain or after watering, or maybe just if there's sort of a fine dust layer on the track, if you are at the track alone, you can do something that really helps you. Can you guess what that is? I'm not going to give you more time than that. You can go out for a five minute run and then walk the track and check your lines. Here you can actually, even on this picture, you can see some lines here, right? Where I've been driving. So let's take a look here. So tip number one, if you're at a track where you can actually see where you have placed your car, then do a five minute run and then walk the track and check because this section here, if we go back to the, it's over here. So this drop down to right hand, this section right here. Now I walked down there and, and looked, where did I actually drive? So let's zoom in a bit so you can see better. Do you see that there are tire marks here? So this is kind of where where I've been driving. Multiple tire marks here. Now, the thing is that I'm like 40 centimeters off the pipe here. If that's like the width of the car, 30 centimeters about, so maybe 40 centimeters off the pipe. So at least one car, I could go closer to the pipe by one car width here. But when I'm on the driver's stand, it sort of, I, I, it looks like I'm going to the inside from my point of view. The perspective is such that I actually think that I'm pretty close to the pipe. But then when I walk the track and look at my marks, I can see that I'm actually off. I need to go even tighter. And this is a especially important section to get right because if I'm out here, this next right hander will be tighter for me. If I can hug the pipe here, I make this next corner uh, smoother, not as tight, rounder. And on this track, this corner was actually tricky because it was kind of, uh, it was cambered in so you could really drive fast, but it was kind of grippy there. So the cars kind of wanted to go up on two wheels even, or maybe even flip over, especially because after the apex, the, the track drops away from you, from the car. So the car naturally will uh, rise up, you know? Uh, do you see what I mean? Like the car is going forward and then the track disappears below it. So the wheels follow the ground and the chassis will rise up a bit. Oh, well, not rise up. It's just the ride height sort of goes up. So it, it was a bit of a tricky section. So because of that, you want this right-hander to be as round and smooth as possible. So this this is an important corner to get correct and i thought i was doing it but i was over here when i walked the track i could see man i need to go tighter to the pipe here another section where you can really see the lines i was taking is this one so here actually now again if we go back to the track this is now this corner here so you do this jump do the hairpin and then down in this bomb hole and then this tight right hander so that's the section we're looking at now 
this line is actually pretty good, but what tended to happen was if you weren't thinking about what you were doing, then you would naturally kind of want to drive here. And then this corner is really tight. And this corner was also tricky because it's an uphill, but then it ends. So you kind of lose grip here also because the same phenomenon. It's almost like you need to brake really hard on the face and then wait for the car to settle and then it grips. So you don't want to make this corner very tight. So you do the previous hairpin and keep it tight to the uh, inside of that corner so that you are outside here and then you make this corner, you open up this corner. So here you can see that I was actually doing this quite well. And uh, one time at least I, I went way too wide, but it's pretty good. Like maybe I need, I would need to tighten it up a bit, but my car was actually pushing here. That's why the, the line is like this. So anyway, so that's tip number one. When you can see the marks on the track that you leave with your car, then do a five minute run and then walk down and, and check where you are actually driving on the track and then make some adjustments and maybe then do another five minute run with those adjustments in mind and then walk the track again and, and see. So the more, more tracks you can do this, this at, the more times you can do this, you learn to tell that the kind of sections where you think you are actually uh, close to the pipe and you're not, or you think you are going wide, but you aren't, you know, these sorts of things and it's free. So there you go. Uh, tip number two, there's a picture for this too. This is my favorite subject, camber. This is also free and surprisingly few people do this, but a way to adjust camber is to look at your tire wear. So here's a good example of a tire that's all getting slick at this point, but you can see that the tire wear is more towards the outside of the tire. So this is the outside of the wheel here, outside of the tire. You can see that the bald spot is here to the outside of the middle line. And uh, there are the pins are more worn out here. There's like three rows of pins basically here. But on the inside, you can see there's like one, two, three, four, five, maybe even uh, four, three, four, five pins on the inside when there's basically three just on the outside. So what this tells you is that you might not be running enough camber. The tire is working very hard on the outside here when the optimum performance would really be if it wears out sort of evenly. So in this situation, maybe you need to add a bit of camber. Another thing you might want to do is maybe add, add some camber gain instead of adding static camber, maybe add some more camber gain. So you can do that by lowering the link on the tower, for example, or shortening the link on the hub. And those would mean that then when you drive into a corner, you will have less positive camber or a slight amount of negative camber. I'll find a picture for you for that. Actually, these images I'm going to show you are from this book, Invisible Speed. Might want to look into it. All the info's in there. And you know what? probably the best book you will have ever read if you get it. Believe me. Anyway, so let's check this out. Uh, this is an illustration of high roll center versus low roll center in a corner and how it affects camber. So the red lines here is low roll center. So the car drives in the track. And as you can see with a low roll center, the outside tire will be further towards positive camber. So the red lines would result in the kind of tire wear that we have here. You know, the outside of the tire is wearing out more. Then if we look at the black lines, we can see that this is for high roll center and in the corner, it's not as far towards uh, positive camber. And this is because of camber change or camber gain, either one. So here you see that when the suspension compresses on a car, the camber increases. So the black lines here is the car at ride height. And then the red lines here is the car with the suspension compressed. So you push down the, on the chassis and 
you can see that the camber increases on the tires. Now, the same thing is happening in a corner. In a corner, th this inside uh, tire is in droop, in down travel, and the outside is uh, compressing like this. So if you look at this picture, you see how this is in droop and this is compressing. So when the suspension is compressing on the outside, camber is increasing, right? So the more camber gain you have, that camber gain will help to keep this outside tire vertical. So it won't go as far into positive camber. Do you see what I mean? Let me show you another picture from the book. Here we go. So this is a picture of Mayfield from the Worlds. So you look at his uh, outside rear tire here and it's pretty much vertical. That's a good situation to be in. Now this tire will have the most amount of grip it can offer. Then if you look at this picture here, you can see that this tire has gone way over the best uh, angle it could be in in a corner. It's into positive camber. So if the grip increases here, like he hits a patch of higher grip, um, or the car starts turning now and the forces on this outside tire grow, this is a bad situation to be in. This can cause the car to flip over or to suddenly lose grip and spin out. It's, this is not a good situation. Now, if you are running your tires like this in the corner, that's when they will wear out like that uh, example I had here. So let's get back to what I stated first of all. Add some static camber or add some camber gain. You add camber gain by lowering the link on the tower, raising the roll center or shortening the link on the hub, for example. Those are the two best ways to do this. And then you will see that uh, this bald spot will move towards the middle of the tire. That will perform better for you, basically. One more. So that was two. First one, look at your lines where you place the car. Second, adjust your camber according to tire wear. And third, this is actually, this is uh, really easy for you to do. You just have to have the balls to do it, basically. And this is identify cars that are working well at a track. And then in the pits, just go and feel them. Grab them by the pussy. Just go and do it. We all do it. We all like to, for, for whatever reason, we walk up to someone, their car is on the table, we feel the suspension. But this is actually a thing that you can do with some thought. So f identify cars that are working well, especially if it's the same brand that you use, and then feel the suspension. Because when you do this, you'll actually learn to feel and understand what the suspension should feel like in different conditions. Low grip, high grip, uh, bumpy track, smooth track, whatever that condition, sort of build up experience for yourself to understand what the suspension uh, should feel like. Because it's been my experience that the number one issue that sort of beginners and mid-level drivers have when, when I help them with their car setup the number one issue is they are running the wrong shock oils. Typically, way too thick. So the damping is just too heavy. So if you feel other people's cars, you move the suspension up and down. You learn to feel that what that good damping feeling is. You will then be able to replicate it yourself on your own car. And you won't have the problem where your su suspension is way too hard or too soft. You sort of in the range of where it's going to work well. This is something that I've noticed that a lot of people do wrong, so use this tip. And uh, that's it for now, I think. So try these out, comment below, and uh, subscribe, because we are almost at 10,000 subscribers, and I'm waiting to get my Kyosho and get ready for the Kyosho Masters. Okay, so I need 10,000 subscribers for that. So thank you very many and uh, have a good weekend.